close. It's got to be close to 1030. It might be a minute early or so. So, <coughs> so get comfortable. and You know this is gentle yoga uh, on October 29th, post-ice storm. So let's, if you're home, you know, I hope you have power. <laughs> and if you're home to try to do some yoga, get some blankets and anything that you need, blocks to support, sit in a chair if that feels better for you. And be easy. Get sitting however you feel comfortable in your hips. So you may decide you want to stretch your legs out if you're on the floor. You may want to cross your legs in your chair. Just get your feet underneath you, hips distance apart and parallel. And then just close your eyes real easily. Let your head very gently tilt just a little bit from one side to the other. Just so you feel a little bit of movement there, tilting the head one way and the other. If you feel like you want to stay on one side because it feels very releasing to the side of your neck or up into the upper back, then do. And then gradually start to sit up nice and tall, letting the top of the head reach upward, letting your eyes gently close. And starting to watch now your breath in and out through your nose. If you can feel the breath coming into your belly, into your ribs, maybe even up into your chest. And then we'll release our arms on out beside us here now. And let yourself just release your shoulders down away from your ears. And let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down through the midline to be in front of our chest. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. Inhaling here. And on the exhale, let's twist to our left. So if you can, bring your right hand to your left knee. Not, don't go that far if it's too much. Just let yourself bring your gaze to where it's comfortable here at first. And feel your feet in the floor, whatever part of your feet are touching. One more inhale. And now stay in your twist, but as you exhale, turn your head back to the right. So you're thinking of turning back to look a little bit over towards your right shoulder a bit. One more inhale here, and on the exhale, bring everything back to center. Your shoulders come around, your head stays forward here. And now, inhale your arms forward, rise them up. We're going to make a big circle. Let the arms, if you can, come as far back behind you as you can, lowering them back down. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands, arms back, bringing them out and up overhead. And then as they come forward, letting them release on down. Good. Inhaling here, and on the exhale, we're going to twist to our right. Bring your left hand to your right knee. Let yourself lengthen up here. Take your time. Feel your feet again in the ground. Feel length in the back of your neck and throat. One more inhale. And now stay in your twist as you exhale. Turn your head to look to the left like you're looking towards your left shoulder. Release there. You can even look down a little bit if that feels good, letting the chin come down a little bit. One more inhale. And on the exhale, bringing yourself everything on back around into center again. Arms on out beside us. Let's inhale both arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. And then let's reverse and inhale the hands up through the midline. 
on the exhale, open the arms on back out and down. And now start to make little circles with your navel. All right, you may need to scoot a little bit away from the back of the chair if you're in a chair, but let yourself start to easily feel the navel circling. So think about really the shoulders might go along for the ride, but you're very much focused on the navel here. Inhaling as you come forward, exhaling as you draw the navel towards the spine, inhaling as it heads forward. Keep the circles going in the same direction. Feel how your tailbone curls under when you draw your navel towards your spine. And when you get ready to switch directions, you stop wherever feels good for you to stop and then reverse and go the other way with these circles. Good, and then finish off the one you're on. Come back up nice and tall. If you're cross-legged on the floor, switch the cross of your legs. You can stretch them out a second there to get easy. Bring the other leg in front. And then we're going to come into a forward bend. If you need to keep your legs stretched long on the floor, do. Let yourself ease your way forward from your low back. In your chair, separate your feet a little more. You can keep your elbows above your knees if you're in your chair. You can go farther down towards the floor with your hands. Same thing if you're on the floor. You can walk out a little farther with your hands if you choose to. Let yourself release and breathe. Feel the weight of your head. Let your jaw go. And then come up just enough because we're going to kind of shift over with our torso towards our left. Now, if you're up in your chair, you might just want to shift towards your thigh using your hands to give you support. If you're on the floor, you can walk your hands over a little bit. Let yourself release there. And then we'll come back through center and we're going to go the other side. So again, just adjusting where you need to as you walk over towards the right, and you can have your hands again on the floor giving you support. And then we'll make our way back into center again. And slowly now, bringing yourself all the way on back upright and bringing the arms on out beside us here now. Let's inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And then lower your left arm down. Reach up through the right side here. Let's come over into side stretch. Letting that hand, if you're on the floor, that left hand give you a little support. Breathing into that side. You're stretching. Really feel the breath expand the right ribs. And then we'll rise back up. And we're going to switch sides. So as that left arm is up now and the right hand comes down, again, you can use it for support if you're on the floor. You can hold on to your chair. You can put your hand in your lap if you want. But feel the breath expanding the left ribs. And then we'll release to come on back up. And now let's let our hands come behind us. So if you're on the floor, you can just use fingertips or you can go to flat hands. Or you can lean back onto the back of your chair, opening up here through the front body. Good. One more breath. And then we'll slowly make our way on back up here and bring your chin down towards your chest. Let yourself now release. Turn the chin a little to one side and then the other so you're moving your head a little bit and find any place that you need to stay. If you feel some tightness in your neck or in your upper back, And then we'll finish off. Come on back in. Bring the head on back up. And we're going to head on around towards our hands and knees from here. So you know if you don't want to be on your knees, don't be. Use a blanket. Use a chair for under your hands if you'd rather. Remember, if your wrists bother you, you can come to fists. You can come to forearms if you want on any surface you want to use. Anything that gets you out of your hands, if you're having issues there with your wrist, use it. And then 
And just be mindful as you start to ease your way through your cat cows. Take your own time, right? So you may feel like it feels very good to stay in your cat or your cow for a couple of breaths. Or you may prefer to move continuously with your breath. Feeling the tailbone initiate. Letting yourself flow through your back here. Good. Finish off the one you're on. And let's come to more neutral spine. Go ahead and look down between your hands. Let's bring our left foot forward and our right foot back and find our first lunge. So whether you want to use the chair, you can go up to the seat of the chair, you can use the back of the chair, you can use blocks, any height. So you can pick the height you want to be with your hands and then just ease your way into this lunge here. Look back at your right foot for a second. Make sure you're not letting the heel track inward. You're reaching directly behind your foot with your heel. And then just easily press the feet away from each other like you're trying to make your mat longer with your feet. Engage your belly. Good. And let's switch and go to the other side. So whether you want to step backwards or step forwards and then back again take your time to get into that lunge again look back at your back foot if you can make sure be mindful you've got that heel reaching directly behind your foot engage your belly find that length down the back body good we're going to switch again this time once you get into the lunge, if you feel like you want to rise your left hand or forearm up onto above your knee there on your thigh, you can. You don't need to, but you can if it feels good. And then we'll switch. And again, step that left foot back, right foot forward. Feeling the feet on the mat there. Again, if it feels fine to bring the right hand or forearm up to your thigh, you can. Good. We're going to step forward from here, coming on into our standing forward bend. So get your feet hips distance apart and parallel. Let your knees soften a little bit. Feel your sitting bones over your heels. Let yourself feel your head turn a little bit. So just say a little bit of no with your head and then see if you can nod your head a little bit. And then just gradually let that weight of your head now help you open up find more space in your spine way to the torso forward helping you release more into the backs of your legs nice full deep even breaths Good. One more nice, full, deep breath. And then we'll let our hands come up to our hips. We're going to bend our knees and rise on up to standing. We'll inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. So take your time here. Actually look down at your hands. And then see if you can just disconnect your pointer fingers for a second. They come away from each other. And on your exhale, let them come back to me. And then the middle fingers are going to separate a little. And as you exhale, let them reconnect. And now your ring fingers, just a little apart. And then easily they come back. And then let your pinkies separate a bit. And then feel them reconnecting. And now try your thumbs. It might be just a tiny little bit. And then bring the thumbs back and now really spread your fingers. Feel each finger connected, your thumbs, whatever part of your palms are touching. And then on your next inhale, go ahead and bring your head on back up where your chin is parallel to the floor. Feel the feet equal in the floor. 
thighs gently lifting upward, tailbone dropping down towards between your heels, letting your body naturally stack itself up, bringing your gaze on out as though you're looking out way out at the horizon. And then we'll unfold our arms on down beside us and inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And on the exhale, bend the knees as we come forward into our standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you find a flat back wherever you want your hands to go, your shins, your blocks, your chair. Then let's step our right foot back and come into lunge. Press the feet away from each other. Draw your shoulders down. Really feeling your hips here now. Finding the length in the back body. And we'll come on into downward facing dog pose. So, you know, adjust whatever height you want your hands to be. Any height on the blocks. The, the lowest, the middle, the highest. Take your time. Let yourself ease back into your sit bones here. Walk if you need to. You know, just be mindful. Bend both knees if that's better. And on the next inhale, we're going to come on out to a plank. Take your time. Engage your belly here. Remember, if it's too much to do a full plank, you can put your knees down and do a half, or you can go to your forearms and do a forearm plank. And you can bend your elbows if you want, coming into a little bit of push-ups here if you choose. And then we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose. Reaching equally back through the sitting bones. And we'll bring our right foot forward to find lunge here. And again, however you need to get there. Put your left knee down if you need to to bring that right foot forward. And let's come on back into standing forward bend. Easy, full, deep, easy breaths. If you like to hold your elbows, go right ahead. If you know you need support, use whatever helps your back to feel good. So elbows above the knees or letting yourself put your hands on the chair or blocks. Good. One more nice full deep breath here. And then bend your knees, feel your feet equal in the floor as you rise on up to standing. We'll inhale the arms out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. And let's unfold our arms. Bring your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, clasp your hands. And let yourself just slide your hands down and look up a little bit with your gaze here. So that the chin rises up a little bit. The hands have slid down as far as they'll go. Arms are fairly straight. Don't lock your elbows if you can help it. And just let yourself open up here through the front body. Now feel the feet on the floor. Feel your tailbone reaching down towards between your heels. One more inhale. And on the exhale, we'll bend the knees and fold forward, coming into like a tabletop with our backs being parallel to the floor. Hands are still just right there, easily behind you. Knees can be as bent as you need. Lengthen out through the spine here. One more breath. And now if you can at least let your head hang do, some of you may even want to fold all the way over your legs. That's up to you. You can keep your arms where they are, or you can release the arms off the back. That is totally up to you and your shoulders where you go with that. One more breath. And then we'll release our arms on down. Let your next inhale come into that long spine. And we'll step our left foot back and find lunge here. Press the feet away from each other. Draw your shoulders down. Inhale. Exhale into your downward facing dog pose. So finding that dog. Take your time. Walk again if you need to. Or bend your knees. Wag your tail if it feels good, right? Just let your body kind of move a little naturally here. And then on the next inhale, we'll come out to that plank or towards the plank. It's up to you, and you know that. So again, you can come down to forearms. You can let yourself do some push-ups here. You can allow yourself to stay in your plank. Feel your sitting bones reaching towards your heels. Zip up that low belly. And then we'll come on back into down dog again. 
And we'll bring the left foot forward to come into lunge. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend. Right to your breaths. So following your breaths now with your awareness being on the breath. Feeling those little spaces between your breaths. So be aware at the end of your inhale, that little tiny space before you exhale. The same thing at the end of your exhale. That brief pause before you inhale. Good. And then we'll bring our hands on up to our hips. We're going to rise on up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on the exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. And let's shift back to a little chair pose. Let your gaze just come about six feet in front of you on the floor. Look down at your knees for just a second now, though. Make sure that you've got your knees right out over the center of your feet. And then go ahead and look a little more forward in front of you on the floor. Really feeling the thighs here. Feel the feet in the floor. See if you can lift your toes up <coughs> just briefly. Think about your arches lifting up. And then let your toes release back down to the floor. And then we're going to press into our feet and rise up and inhale our arms all the way up through the midline. On the exhale, open the arms like wings, folding forward into your standing forward bend. On your next inhale, find that long, flat back. And we're going to walk into a down dog from here. So take your time. You know, however you want to get in dog, whether your hands are on the floor or blocks or chair, really ease your way. See if when you inhale, you can rise your heels up. And when you exhale, you let them lower back down. So inhaling, you rise way up, coming onto the balls of the feet and really feel your toes. Exhale, let them lower down. One more time, inhaling those heels up and exhaling, letting them come down. Elbows hug towards each other. Let your next inhale bring you out to your plank. Now you know from here it is optional to do a back bend. You can not need to, right? You can come down and come up into a sphinx or a cobra or an up dog, or you can let yourself come from that plank right to a back bend. And then we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose. Take your time. Don't force anything. Move if you need to. And then we're going to do that again. We're going to inhale our way out to a plank. Totally optional coming into a back bend. You can just go down to the floor and rest if you'd rather. You know, take your time. Good. And then we'll make our way again back into downward facing dog and let's bring our right foot forward to come into lunge and then we'll come all the way back into our standing forward bend and let it be <coughs> excuse me a real release so see if you can let yourself really go to your breath Feel like you're as released as possible in your upper body, like your arms can hang, unless you need them for support, of course. Let go of your jaw. Imagine your face just fully softening. Especially think about your forehead, like smoothing out your forehead. Letting go around your eyes. And letting go around your mouth. And then we're going to bring our hands right on up to our hips. Bend our knees, press equally into our feet, and come on up. And inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. So coming into your mountain pose, adjust if you need to shift around a little bit. Bring yourself into starting to look right on out like you are in an empty field and you're looking way, way out, out towards the horizon. But it's really open. And then just enjoy accepting your breaths now. However your breaths need to flow in and out. Uh, 
And then we'll unfold our arms on down beside us and shake out. Move around a little bit if you need to walk around, do Move through your feet. And we're going to come into some warriors. So if you're using your chair, you might want to turn it around. And you also want to have your block to get me there. And we'll step our right foot back and come on into warrior two. So get that back foot about parallel to the back edge of the mat. But remember, you can send your heel back farther. Just try to look at that foot for a second. Make sure you're not rolling into the arch of your foot, which is really sometimes very easy to do. So feel like all four corners of the feet are on the floor. Same thing for your left foot now. Look at it. Lift your heel up for a second. Feel your quad engaging. Think about the outer left hip dropping downward a little bit. And you lined up the knee there. And then go ahead and release the heel back down. And let's bring our arms all the way up into a wide open V. Draw the pinkies towards each other. Let yourself just enjoy feeling that lift up through the front of the body. And imagine you've got energy going all the way out through your fingertips. And then turn the hands, palms away from each other. We're going to lower the arms down for warrior two and turn just in time to look right over the top of that left hand. Feeling the feet pressing into the mat, reaching out equally through both sets of fingertips. If you can imagine yourself in space right now, all right, feeling your whole body in the pose. One more breath. And then we'll turn the left palm up and we're going to inhale, reach up towards the sky. Nice full breath here into the left side. And on the exhale, we'll come into side angle. So your left hand or forearm can go onto your chair or your thigh, bringing that right arm on up into line with the right side of the body if your shoulder lets you. Feel free to put the hand back down on your hip. You know that. Don't push anything into the shoulders. Good. One more breath here. And then we're going to come on back into warrior two, pressing those feet away from each other as we come. And let's bring our hands down, straighten our left leg out. We're going to turn our feet more parallel for a wide-legged forward bend. If you want to grab blocks on your way down, you can grab a block or blocks. Let yourself bring hands to the floor if you'd rather. And then keep your hands in front of you. Let your back be long. And bend a knee at a time. Just let yourself easily come out a little more into the inner thighs. Don't do this if it hurts your knees. And then make your way back to center. Let both your knees bend just a little bit. And now take your time. See, see where you think you want to go with this. You know, you can stack your blocks up and get out of your hands and your wrists and support yourself with the blocks under your forearms. Or you can let yourself hang with the forehead, the head down towards the ground, hands coming back more towards between your feet. So whatever works for your back. See if you can, though, start to find again that full release through the upper body, letting go through your face, your jaw, And then watching the breaths. Feel those little spaces between your breaths. Imagine your inhales and exhales are equally important, which enables them to become a little more equal in length. Good. One more full deep breath. And now to come up as you walk your hands on out and you decide if you want to let your feet get a little closer before you come on up to standing, just be mindful. If you're dizzy at all, you might want to stay wide for a bit before you walk your feet together. And then take your time. Move through your feet and your ankles a little bit if you need to circle your feet around. Do, And we're going to go to the other side. So we'll step our right foot forward, left foot back, line your heels up, take a peek at that left foot, 
Again, you want to make sure you're not rolling to the inside of the foot. You want to think about the base of the big toe mound and the little toe mound on the mat there, arch lifting up. And then go ahead, look at that right leg as you bend the knee, lift your right heel, which really enables you to line the knee up with the center of the foot, releasing through that outer right hip like it drops down. And then lower your heel on back down to the mat. And again, rising the arms up, coming into that wide V. Turn your pinkies towards each other so you feel how the shoulders just naturally release way down, away from your ears. And then we'll rotate the palms away from each other. We're going to lower the arms down, turning our gaze to end up looking right out over the top of that right hand. So take your time. Let yourself feel your feet in the floor here. Release the shoulders down. Good. We're going to turn the right palm up and inhale. Reach up towards the sky with the right hand. Really let yourself breathe into the right ribs. And on the exhale, we'll come into that side angle. Whether you put your hand or your forearm onto your thigh or onto your chair is up to you. And then you can add that left arm up in line. Remember, it's fine to be up higher. It's not about how low you go. It's about keeping the link through both sides of the body. Adding that arm is up to you in your shoulder. One more breath. Extended side angle. We're going to come on back into warrior two. Pressing the feet away from each other as we come. And then we'll bring our hands down. We're going to turn our feet more parallel. And we're going to come on forward again. Take your time. This time, once you get your hands down to where you want to go, Shift over to the right. Either your block can shift or you can walk your hands over to the right as far as you want to go. Once you get there, where as far as you want, bring your right hand up to your right hip. If anybody wants to roll their shoulder up a little bit, you can. And then we'll bring that right hand down. We're going to walk back through center and we're going to go to the left. Again, doesn't matter how far you go. You'll kind of know when you get there and then let the left hand come on up to your, low, to your hip there. And then let yourself, if you want to roll the left shoulder up a little bit, do. And then we'll come on back down with the hand, walking on back to center. Now, this isn't for everybody, but if you can, turn your hands backwards so your fingertips face behind you. Now, you can stay with the hands forward to do this. You can even be on blocks right? Just a little bit different feeling up into your shoulders. Or you can walk back behind yourself with your hands, fingertips leading you back farther and farther behind yourself. But you got to be where you can be. And then just take your time. Once you get to where you can stay, and breathe. That's all you need to do. Accept your breaths in and out. One more breath. And we're going to slowly now bring our hands back forward so that we can think of rising up. So you decide whether you want to adjust your feet. You can come on up to standing. If you're dizzy, again, take your time. Give yourself time to adjust. Bring your feet together however you want. Move around again through your feet and your ankles. Good. <coughs> we're going to come into a lunge this time. So either have your chair turned to the seat of the chair facing you if you're going to use a chair, or have your, your blocks to the highest height here. And we're going to step our right foot back. Hands are going to be down and come into a, for a lunge here, just a regular lunge at first. So just be mindful. Let your, let your weight now go into your right hand and bring your left hand to your left hip. And roll that left shoulder up. Come into a twist lengthening out through the top of your head. Now, if you want, you can add that top arm. That's optional, not necessary. Really feel that reach through that inner right heel. Feel your calf getting that long release. And then we'll bring the hand on back down. 
And we're going to come into pyramid from here, which means we're going to straighten that front knee out, lower the right heel to the floor, which means an adjustment for most of us to bring the foot up and in a little more, a little bit shorter stance. So the feet are really fully on the floor here now. Thighs are engaging upward. Legs are straight, but you're not locking your knees. You're lifting up. So think about squeezing up a little bit with the thighs. And it's up to you here if you like to bow over this leg or not. You can if you want. You can fold forward. Or you can stay up more parallel to the floor. Opening up the backs of the legs here. Now if you can, come back up more parallel to the floor. And let's put our left hand up on our left hip. And then see about rolling that left shoulder up. You can even put your palm right down onto your low back here. One more breath. And then we'll come on back from that revolved triangle. Take a breath here. One more breath. And then bend the front knee. Step forward with your right foot. And we're just going to right away step our left foot back to lunge. So we're just switching sides right here. Find your lunge first. Really get into that lunge because remember we're going to add a twist. So left hand comes to where you like, whatever height. Right hand is going to come to your right hip. And then roll that shoulder up. Again, let yourself stay fairly level here in the hips. Try not to drop down too far in this left side. You're trying to stay pretty even and level. You can stretch the right arm up if you want. Or you can keep the right hand down. Reach back through that inner heel. Let it feel really good to lengthen out through the top of your head. Good. We're going to bring the hands on back down. And we're going to find our pyramid. So, again, adjusting. You may even need to change the height of your hands, you know, how you are on your blocks. Back foot fully on the floor. Turned out maybe 20, 30 degrees. Thighs are actively engaging upward. So you're not locking your knees, but you're certainly using all those muscles around your knees. And you can fold over that front leg if you want. So if it feels good to really come over the leg, do it. If it feels like too much in your legs, don't. Stay up higher if you need. One more breath. And then let yourself come more parallel again to the floor. We're going to add that twist. Remember, again, this time as the right hand comes up, legs are straight, rolling that shoulder up into revolve triangle, lengthening out through the top of your head. You can lift the right arm up if you want to. Totally up to you and your shoulders. And then we're going to release and come on back down with our hands. Let's bend the front knee, step forward, get your feet right underneath you here now. And see if you can bend both your knees, okay, kind of pretty deeply, you know. And then you may want support under your hands, the chair or the blocks. Lift both your heels up. So you're coming on to really your heels are up and you're really feeling your toes in the floor. Let yourself release there. And then softly bring your heels down, but keep your knees bent. So you'll shift your weight a little more back once your heels get down to the floor. And then see about coming into a little bit longer legs. Releasing into your Uttanasana, your standing forward bend. Wherever you want your hands to go. Nice full breaths. Good. And then we'll bring our hands on up to our hips. We're going to bend our knees and rise on up. And inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come right down together in front of our hearts. Finding mountain pose. So if you can, just feel the air around you. Really imagine as you look on out that you're being supported, really, by the space around you. So it's very easy. There's a feeling of effortlessness, really, in your mountain pose. But that doesn't mean you're dropping, right? Instead, it's this feeling of lift, but easy lift. And 
And then we'll let our arms again come on down beside us and swing your arms around a little bit. Move the, your hands a little too if you want to circle your wrist. We're going to bring our mats into a wall. So if you have a wall at home, we don't need much of one, but let yourself go ahead and come in if you can to let a hand come to the wall. Let's do left hand to the wall, actually. I'm going to use the pole. So let yourself come into standing on your left foot. Left hand is giving you a little support. And bring your right leg up like you're stepping up a high step. Flex your foot. You can hold behind your thigh if you want. You can hold your knee if you can get your knee, right? Just see if you can start to rise the left arm up and then maybe let go of the wall and balance here. Feel that lift in the belly. Now, if you want to put your hand back to the wall, do. And we're going to open the knee out to the side. You know, for most of us, about 45 degrees, right? So it's not all the way to the side. Your hips are still square to the wall you're looking at. And you can balance here, too, if you want. And then bring your hand back. Bring the knee back to the front. And now bend the left knee as you bring the right knee down, right beside your left knee. And they're side by side. Your left knee is bent and your right foot's behind you now, reaching towards your buttocks. Coming into quad here. Now this is up to you. You can decide to reach back and get that foot if it's accessible to you, right? If not, totally understandable. Stay here where you are. You can balance here. You can come into a straighter leg. Let yourself balance right there, whether you've got the foot or not. Push the foot into your hand if you're holding it. And if you want to come a little back more with your knee, your chest responds by coming a little forward. You can do that if that feels good to you. Pressing the foot into the hand if you've got it. And then we're going to release. Bring the knee on back forward again like you're stepping up that step in front of you again. And then cross your right ankle above your left knee and shift your hips back a little bit like you're about to sit in a chair and find a release here. So you can hold on to the wall, take your time, you can go as low as you want, you can let yourself really allow that release to happen in that supporting hip. And then we'll come on back up and we're gonna turn around and go to the other side. Take care of that foot you're standing on, circle it around, move through. I like to push into the top of the toes, to stretch out the foot. And then here we go again. Right leg is our supporting leg. Again, holding the wall there, stepping like you're stepping up a high step, bringing that right left knee on up, and you can hold behind the thigh. So you're getting in front of you at first, whether you're allowing yourself as you do that to hold on to your leg or balance. You don't have to hold the leg if you don't want to at all. You can try to balance there with the knee in front. Good, we're going to open the knee to the side. So opening into that about a 45 degree angle for most of us. Again, you can play with your balance there, lifting up through the front of that right leg there, through the front of the right hip. And then we'll bring the knee back into the front and bend both knees, let that, the knees come side by side now, right? You can hold the wall if you need. And maybe this is enough. You may want to balance here. You can even bring both arms up and balance here if you want. And if you feel like, huh, I do want to reach back and get hold of the top of my left foot, you can hold it. You can pull the heel in for a second. You can even push the foot into your hand, opening more across the left side of your chest. And you may decide to send the knee back and let the chest come a little forward too. It's up to you, and you can hold on. You don't have to balance. You can if you want. You can let go or not. Good. And then come on back down. Let yourself release. Good. And from here, just bring your hands behind you. And let your hands just clasp, but don't pull the palms together. Just let your fingers interlace. Let the hands be real easy behind you. And then slide them down. Let your gaze come up like we did before, really allowing the chest to open. Try not to curl your tailbone forward. Let your tailbone drop down. Let the chest open up here. Good. And now we're going to come back to a wall, and we're going to come in with our left shoulder close to the wall. So as you do this, you get your shoulder in pretty close. 
Think about rising that left inside arm up the wall. Now, if you have to step farther away from the wall, do it. Don't do anything that bothers your shoulder. As you bend that left elbow and let the left hand come down, maybe behind your head or your neck or maybe on your upper back. And if the elbow has to come forward, let it do it. And then right hand behind you, letting the palm face outward. Whether you keep it down low, like on your sacrum or on your low back, or possibly you want to think about bringing your hands towards each other on your back, coming into that the full bringing hands together. But it's not necessary to get into the shoulders. Keep the gaze forward. Remember, this is a good one to do, like with a towel at home. Keeping mobility in your shoulders and letting yourself open the chest here. Imagine you're breathing in and out through your heart which will even more focus on that openness through the chest. Good. And then we'll slowly step away from the wall, bring the arms on back down beside us here, swing them back and forth a little bit, and we're just going to turn around and do the other side. So take your time. You know, shoulders, everybody's shoulders are different. You know, if you can't hardly lift your arm up, Go where you can go. Elbow can be way in front of you. It doesn't have to be up all the way up. Bring that inside arm up where you can. And then again, when you bend the elbow, adjust however you need. And then left hand coming behind you, palm facing out, can stay way low. And if even that bothers your shoulder, don't do it. Let the arm hang. Or you can send the hands closer towards each other. Remember to keep your gaze forward, which keeps you from having that hump in your upper back, right? And again, that idea of breathing in and out through your heart, which helps you just feel this huge openness in the chest. And then breathe. Nice, full, easy breaths. Feel your feet equal in the floor if you can. And then we're going to slowly release, step away from the wall. Bring yourself with your back towards the wall. And then just give yourself a hug, one arm on top of the other. Release your chin down towards your chest and let your head turn a little side to side. Let the chin come one way and the other. And then release your arms on down. Shake them out a little bit. We're going to come down onto our bellies on the floor. So coming on down and let yourself be mindful as you come down. Take your time. Make a little pillow with your hands if you can. Rest your forehead on your hands. Let yourself breathe into your low back. So you feel that rising of the low back as you inhale. Good. And now, let your hands release and bring your forehead to the floor and bring your hands behind you and interlace your fingers like we did standing up. Okay? So this little bit of a back bend when your hands are back like this can be a lot harder for people. So if it's too much, don't do it. Bring your hands back if you need or separate them. Okay? But if you can, as you inhale, float up like you're doing a little locust pose. Right? Let your hands float a little more down the buttocks if you can so that you feel really open across your chest. Just a little bit different feeling when you have your hands clasped. Some of you may want to release the arms a little off your back, the hands a little bit up. And then come on back down. Take a breath into your back here. And then release the hands. Let the palms face down. The arms are out beside you, just a little breath away from you. So the hands are on the floor instead of your mat. And on your next inhale, float up into that locust pose again. Let yourself reach back now through the fingertips. Come down a little bit when you exhale. And then when you inhale, maybe come back up a little bit. And then we're going to release on back down, and we're going to shift back towards pose of a child. 
So take your time. Let your big toes come towards each other, your knees apart, and you can either stay forward on your forearms, or if your knees allow you and your hips allow you to shift back, your hips towards your heels do. You know, you're welcome to stack your arms up and put your head on your arms. You're welcome to grab blocks. You can, if you want, you can release your arms down alongside your legs. So your choice, let yourself be easy in the way you are here. So you can breathe into your low back. Feel those nice, full, deep breaths. Good. And then come up enough. Use your arms to let you come up a little bit so you can walk your hands over to the right in your child's pose. And then if you can let your head hang and let yourself stay once you've gotten over to the right where you can be. And breathe into your left side. And then come on back through center and see if you can walk your hands over to the left. Again, it doesn't matter how far. And then once you're there, breathing into the right side. Good. And then come on back into center. Let's shift forward onto our forearms. Clasp your hands. Send your pinky finger out. Get your elbows right under your shoulders. Press down into your forearms. And then imagine that you're hugging your elbows towards each other. And then let your chest melt a little towards the ground. So you're not tensing up in between the shoulder blades on the back. And that's a basis of lifting up onto your forearms from here, where you feel this sense of the muscles that are wrapping underneath your arms, causing that hollowing feeling in your armpits. Those, that's what you want to feel if you decide you want to lift up into a dolphin pose, to where you're finding release between the shoulder blades, and you're able to let your head hang. You don't need to lift up here. If you'd rather do a forearm plank, go right ahead and come into a forearm or a half forearm plank. That's up to you. Remember, if it bothers your shoulders, don't do it. Good. And we're going to release and come on back down. From here, shift back into child's pose for one more breath. Just give yourself a little relief there, a little break. And then we'll bring our hands back by our knees, and we're going to come on around to sitting. So if you know that sitting for you would be better done on a blanket, grab yourself a blanket or a block or both so that when you do bring your legs out, and we're going to come into a bit of a wide angle. It doesn't have to be real wide. You know, whether your legs are close together like this or farther apart has nothing to do with anything except how you're built in your hips. So think of your knees and your toes facing up. And you can use your hands back here, especially if you feel like this curls your tailbone forward and makes your, your back come into this position. Being up higher helps, number one, but also just the idea of lifting up through the crown of your head and feeling your heels on the ground and the toes facing up. And maybe this is enough. Maybe right here, it feels good enough for you. You don't need to come forward. You can if you want. If you come a little bit forward, you're going to feel a little more in your inner thighs. You can always put your hands on your legs. You can put your hands in front of you if that helps you more. So take your time. Let those inner thighs get a release there. <laughs> it is a release. Maybe it doesn't quite feel like one, but it is. One more breath. And then we're going to come up, and let's let our left hand slide down our left leg. You know, you can go to your shin. You can go down to your ankle. Go as far as you want, and then see if you can bend your left elbow a little bit. So from here, bring your right hand up to your right ribs. So the, the fingertips are facing down towards your waist. 
And you can feel the rib cage right here. You can actually kind of explore a little bit, feeling those little spaces between the ribs, both front and back. Pretty miraculous thing are our ribs, right? And then take your time. You may want to stay there. It might feel good for you to put your hand up behind your head to get a more of a side or a different side stretch there. Not necessarily more, but different. Or you might want to stretch into your arm long. That is totally up to you. If you get to a point where it doesn't feel good, backtrack. One more breath. And then we're going to slowly come on back up, and we're going to lower our right hand down, and we're going to slide it. Again, how far you go is up to you. Once you get to where you're like, okay, that feels pretty good, bending the elbow takes you a little more, right? And then see if you can put your left hand up on your ribs. You know, you can stay up. You don't have to go far. You can just barely be out over that leg. Don't push it. If anything hurts, just stop. Come back and sit up if you need. If you like to put your hand behind your head, you do. Or if you like to reach the arm long, right? Totally up to you. Good. One more breath here into the left ribs. And then, again, use your belly to help you come on back up. And now, even if you just bow your head forward, do. Some of you might want to actually come a little more forward. So if it feels good to come forward between your legs, do. But if you can't let your head hang, do that as well. And we're going to slowly make our way on back up. And we're going to come on around with our legs so we can lie down on our backs, on our mats. So take your time. Once you get there, get yourself on down however you need to. Bring your knees on into your chest. And let, your, let yourself separate your knees and circle the feet around a little bit. Let your feet just circle. And circle them both that ways. Go ahead and switch. Go the other direction. Good. And then bring your feet on back down to the floor. Let your knees come just a little bit side to side. Not so much that you lower the knees down. You actually just shift from the top of one hip to the other. Good. And then come back to center. And let's cross our right thigh over our left thigh. So it's like your woman cross-legged in a chair, if you can be. If that's not possible, go ahead and do the figure four, all right? And then bring your knees in towards your chest and flex through both your feet. Let yourself just release. Then you can hold the knees if you want, anywhere you want. Let yourself breathe. Feel that release for that top hip. You can hold behind your thigh if you'd rather, right, rather than holding on top. Good. One more breath. And then bring that left foot down. We're going to uncross, and we're just going to switch. Go to the other side. So, again, if you can do thigh over thigh, do. If it's too much, go ahead and do the figure four. Bring the knees in. Flex through both the feet. You hold wherever you want, so you can reach over, hold behind your thigh. You can hold on to your knees. You can hold on to your shins if you want. Just let it be easy. Feel the back releasing. Good, and then we'll come on back down. We're going to uncross and bring our arms out beside us into a T position here now. Right, so allow your palms to face up or down, whichever feels better for you and your shoulders. And then bring your knees in towards your chest. Flex through both your feet and let the outside edges of your big toe mounds press towards each other. Let your heels separate just a tiny little bit. So now you're pressing 
mindfully pressing the outside of the big toe mounds together. Take a nice inhale. Keep flexing your feet. And as you exhale, let your knees go to the left. And then when you inhale, you're going to bring the knees back into center. And when you exhale, you're going to let the knees go to the right. Now, how far you go is totally up to you. Inhaling the knees back in to the top and exhaling when they go off to a side. So again, you can go like knees coming way down towards the ground on these twists, or you can just barely let the knees come from side to side. Now some of you might want to add to this so that when you get ready to bring your knees to the left, you straighten your right leg out long, reaching your right foot towards your left hand, and then you bring both knees back in to center each time with the knees bent. So if you like that, you can stretch the top leg out and then bring the knees back in to center. And if you don't like doing that, don't do it. But let the knees stay bent if that feels better. Good. Now finish off the one you're on. Let yourself come on back into center. And then we'll bring our feet to the floor. Bring yourself into setting up for a little bridge pose. So now bring the arms down alongside you. Whether you want to bend your elbows or not is up to you. Feel the feet now on the floor. Remember you want them parallel, a little wider than they are in your mountain pose. Lift your toes up for a second. Press into the backs of the arms and see if you can float your hips up. Now when the toes are up, it's a little different feeling. Roll the shoulders under if you want to stay up there. Let the toes release on back down to the floor. And then just enjoy. Try lifting your heels up if you're up there. You can lower the heels down whenever you want. And if you're like, hmm, really, I'd rather have a block, grab a block, put it underneath you, come into your supported bridge if you'd rather. If you need to come back down, come down and go back up into bridge pose, by all means do that. And if you prefer just to stay in that supported bridge, giving your low back plenty of time to release, then do that for sure. So moving up and down is fine. Staying on a block is fine. And you know, you don't have to wait for me. When you're ready to come down out of your bridge pose, you let yourself come down whenever you choose. You can stay up a little longer if you want. Just remember when you do come down to let your knees come on in towards your chest. Let the back release. Whether you want to make little circles with your knees or let the knees come side to side, that's up to you. You know that. And then just let your body do what it needs. And that could be anything. You know, if you feel like, oh, all I want to do is stretch out long and get myself into Shavasana. Or maybe you need another little twist out of those twists that we did, those double knees. Maybe you feel like you want to open your hips a little more. And if you're getting ready for Shavasana here in the studio, I will start to bring stuff. So take your time. <laughs> Same thing at home. If you start to get ready for Shavasana and you need some support 
if you have either blankets that you can roll up and put underneath your knees or if you need a little support for the back of your head take your time let yourself get comfortable in the way you have your arms you know sometimes just a slight change and how you have your arms or your legs can help get more released into your shoulders and your hips. So feel free to wiggle around a little bit to come into your Shavasana. And then just let yourself feel, if you can, the weight of your arms, that full release of the arms, the weight of your legs. And just start to follow your breath now, letting your focus be on your breath, the waves of the breath coming in and going out. It helps you to envision resting in those little spaces between your breaths. And just easily allow your focus to keep returning to your breath over and over and over again. Just giving your body and your brain these few minutes to benefit however you need from all we just did. And allow yourself to completely and fully relax.
think I have to go now. Try to allow yourself to come back to feeling the ground, the firmness of the floor underneath you again. Letting your breath gradually come in and go out more fully and deeply. Just imagine those deeper breaths really re-energizing you, allowing you to want to move again. And then let your fingers, your toes, your hands, your feet start to lead you so that when you're ready to move your arms and legs, you move them the way that feels good, bending or stretching. Really take your time. You know you're welcome to stay on your back. You're welcome to roll to either side if that's comfortable for you. You can always use your arm as a pillow. Let your knees be soft. But take your time and just come in to accepting the breaths, bringing you back really to being physical again. So that when you feel ready to rise up, you can get comfortable in how you're sit sitting. Stretch your legs out if you need. Sit up on something if you need to. But let your eyes close. Let yourself lengthen up through the top of your head. And come back to your breath. Come back to that observation of your breath in and out. And on your next exhale, let your hands come gently to meet there in front of your chest, in front of your own heart. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hmm.